Welcome back you're here with Goldberg. Today we need to discuss this never-ending crisis in the American system. Now, I find it fascinating how most people truly believe, in almost uh, the way a zealot might, that they are engaged in this conflict of virtues. So you're either the passionate patriot who is defending the police and preventing America from devolving into socialism and standing with President Trump, or you are the integritous liberal concerned about the demolishing of our institutions. We must uphold the rule of law and elect Joey Biden to be president of the United States. But while this is all going on, I can't help but say it's a massive facade. Huh, I said that before, so maybe it's a bit redundant. You know, I just finished this book, and it's called The Secrets of the Federal Reserve by Eustace Mullins. It talks about how it came about, uh, what it does, what it has done. And you just realize most people are not even receiving. They're not on the wavelength to even comprehend how much they've essentially been played for fools. You know, this is a organization that was founded by rich bankers, where you had essentially a Republican and a Democrat version of the exact same bill, which they were playing around to pretend that they had some kind of political opposition. It's just like these, you know, surveillance bills or these spending bills tend to pass overwhelming majorities. It's not even close even though we're supposed to believe that there's this intense debate going on and no one's willing to compromise. Well, they already know the outcome. They just have to perform the theater so that we can believe it. It's, it's kind of quite sad. Just looking at the treatment of people by the various regimes, and these are, of course, self-described liberal regimes, those who are speaking out against uh, the, the organized interests against the war efforts because the Federal Reserve is very much wrapped up in World War I, World War II. Uh, the main banking figures, J.P. Morgan, the Rothschilds, this is not conspiracy. This book does a really good job breaking it down historically, uh, how they were involved, what they were doing. And, you know, Eugene Debs in prison, not because he was a socialist, but because he was against the war. Do you know how many people got locked up under Woodrow Wilson? because they opposed the war. And he was the passionate liberal professor. Um, Ezra Pound, who was one of the main reasons this book got published, was put in a mental asylum by FDR because he opposed World War II. And he supported Mussolini, or he at least had sympathies for Mussolini. This is, you know, these are the people that, in hindsight, are looked at like gods. FDR saved the country. It's like, look what he was doing to people. Look what he did to the Japanese. Look what he did in terms of uh, uh, gold. You know, it's quite, uh, it's quite a, a disappointment of sorts. But you see the policy of laws regarding who could own gold. And they go back to like the time of Cromwell, I believe, or William of Orange. And then, of course, 1934, FDR's order trying to prevent Americans from keeping gold. And you have to ask, you know, what's going on here? Obviously, there's a much bigger agenda afoot than people recognize. And they're just obsessed with Democrats or Republicans. It's really sad. You look at the reaction of the system towards people who actually stood up against it. Um, Charles Lindbergh Sr., Louis McFadden, how they were sort of just quashed and laid aside so that it could continue marching on. This is something that he even critiques Paul Volcker, who is considered one of the better uh, Federal Reserve chairmen in recent memory. Milton Friedman criticized the Federal Reserve. But all this stuff is essentially noise. It's for kooky Ron Paul, you know, that old guy who is concerned about money. But when is a mainstream politician going to seriously step up and say, this has to end? Trump sort of alluded to it, and then you saw what he did, and he got into power. He doesn't really care about Federal Reserve reform, um, but perhaps, of course, he doesn't have that much control over it. Who knows? Certainly, this is why I'm very suspicious of people who describe themselves as progressives, because uh, uh, millionaires and billionaires, this is a big day. It's a big day. 
And who's the other one? She's wearing the thing on her, like the bounty paper towel. Oh, sorry, I can't say that. I think she's hot, though. I would probably take her out and do more things. She's kind of cute. But even the progressives, how many times do you see a progressive come out and say, we need to abolish the Fed or at least nationalize it, make it a real, you know, an institution controlled effectively by the Congress under proper oversight? You know, Congress is supposed to coin the money. They don't do that, and that's because they're essentially controlled opposition. So that's when you begin to sort of peel back the very thin veil of misconception. You realize we're essentially pawns, and so many folks don't want to admit that because it takes away their idea of themselves as having sovereignty and being an independent actor or an independent voter. But you got to realize money controls everything. They talk about J.P. Morgan saying, I think it was like five or eight men run the United States, heads of big industry. And the president essentially is someone just chosen. You know, they select who they want to be president. This is a really big deal. And this is something that folks should be more concerned about, really, as opposed to, you know, Kaepernick kneeling, which I understand why people find it offensive. But Kaepernick kneeling is a microcosm compared to these serious problems that most people are not addressing because it's boring or it doesn't rile them up. But at the end of the day, the stability of your currency, the level of inflation, I've talked about that in another video, we don't have inflation, of course we do, how that's actually creating poverty and destroying the working and middle classes. When you don't pay attention to things because there are numbers involved and you just want to play the whole, I'm in a culture war, you can win the culture war, but you're not going to solve the underlying rot of the system. And that's what needs to be addressed. So I would definitely recommend picking up this book. Uh, I will put it in the description. I'll put a link to it. Again, regardless of your political orientation, because that should be irrelevant. When it comes to these issues, it's a question of, are you free? And is the money that you're earning and spending so much of your life to accrue going to be worth anything? That's why it's no secret that folks are going into gold and silver. It's not a surprise that Bitcoin has become appealing. It's because a lot of individuals are looking at it and saying, okay, if you can just print two or three trillion at the flick of a wrist, then in five years, is it going to be 10 trillion? Oh yeah, no problem. When is there going to be limitation, if ever? That is the question that we all need to ask.